Hi guys. It is a cloudy, somewhat gloomy Sunday afternoon here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, but it is a pleasant day here in this undisclosed piece of uh, paradise here on the planet. And it is now Sunday afternoon, December 6th, 2020, and I have not turned on my computer in two days. I have been so busy uh, doing whatever it is that I do when I'm not being a collapsitarian. And, uh, oh yes, this is Collapse Chronicles, and I am Sam Mitchell. And uh, so I'm just going through the various emails I've received from alert listeners uh, around the Doomosphere few things to share with you. So, uh, <coughs> I guess in no particular order, we are going to, uh, no particular order, we're going to look at a few odds and ends here as the tourists come to enjoy the, uh, the beauty of the, of the swamp here. But we're going to head over to the I guess the Bay Area start here with fewer than 2,000 butterflies counted so far. The Western Monarch takes an astonishing step closer to extinction. Two years ago, when volunteers counted only 27,000 monarch butterflies in the Xerces Society's annual Western Monarch Thanksgiving count, it meant the butterflies had crossed a threshold identified by scientists as the point past which Western migratory monarchs were likely to become extinct. 27,000 two years ago. Still, after holding steady through 2019, the numbers trickling out of the count so far this fall have stunned even scientists who expected the worst a week after Thanksgiving, with more than half of monitored overwintering sites, including all the largest ones, reporting their numbers, the 2020 count is below 2,000 butterflies. This number represents an astonishing continuation of the near total collapse of the western migratory population of the species over the last few decades. Scientists estimate that between 3 and 10 million monarchs overwintered in California in the 1980s. By the late 1990s, volunteers still counted millions of them. More recently, they counted 192,000 in 2017, 298,000 in 2016, what was it, around 27,000 in 2018 and 19, and less than 2,000 this year. Um, this is Man Forrester, an entomologist from the University of Nevada. Uh, I sort of thought I was prepared for anything in terms of monarch bad news, but I did a double take. Yes, you did. All right, but uh, we're going to go from the collapse of the monarchs to let's just take a quick peek into the unseen man-made man tracks on the deep ocean floor. Yes, I, this is, uh, I've reported on this. This is on deep sea mining. All right, far from land, deep sea mining trials have left barren marks that are still there decades later. And as Richard Fisher writes, they symbolize two different time scales colliding. Yes, uh... 
at the base of the Pacific Ocean, hundreds of miles from land, there are some curious marks on the seafloor that no animal could have made. Some of them look like narrow troughs carved into pale silt. Others could be claw marks gouged through the ecosystem of the deep by an undersea monster, which is exactly what they are. Humanity has left many signatures on the surface of the earth, but these long-lived features on the seafloor go largely unseen. Do you think so? Uh, they have been there for decades, like the footsteps and tracks that astronauts left on the moon. They are still visible now, with nothing to wash them away. Uh, these are, so, they're looking at this, uh, this, you know, when they were first poking around down there in 1989, uh, what is that, somewhere around 37 or anyway, I'm losing my math. Uh, there you go. Soon there will be many more tracks like these carved all over the ocean abyss, one of the last untouched wildernesses. What might future generations make of them? And what might they say about humanity's demand for resources in the 21st century? Yes. And if you like this story, you may also like the scarred landscapes created by humanity's material thirst. There you go, but let's go over from just the bottom of the floor. What is China up to this week? Let's uh, peek in over what's going through China's minds. China to expand weather modification program to cover an area larger than India. This is CNN. This is not the Alex Jones channel. <coughs> China this week revealed plans to drastically expand an experimental weather modification program to cover an, an area of over five and a half million square kilometers, otherwise known as over two million square miles, more than one and a half times the total size of India. According to a statement from the State Council, China will have a, quote, developed weather modification system by 2025, thanks to breakthroughs in fundamental research and key technologies, as well as improvements in, quote, comprehensive prevention against safety risks. Oh, yes, I know I feel better with uh, with the uh, China has, has uh, had comprehensive prevention against safety risks. Okay. In the next five years, the total area covered by artificial rain or artificial snow snowfall uh will reach five and a half million square kilometers, over 580,000 square kilometers or 224,000 square miles, will also be covered by hail suppression technologies. Yes, China says the program will help with disaster relief. I think it'll help with disaster creation. Disaster relief, agricultural production, emergency responses to forest and grassland fires, you know, meaning send in the rain, and dealing with unusually high temperatures or droughts. Yes, there you go. And this goes on and on. 
but uh, that's what will happen in China. But we have the big question is what might happen in California? I've mentioned this before, but it's been a while. This actually happened 150 years ago. Anyone act like this is, there is no historical precedent. This is uh, California's trillion dollar mega disaster that no one is talking about. Disasters typically associated with the West Coast include devastating earthquakes and out-of-control wildfires, but there is an epic disaster that could be far worse than both earthquakes and wildfires, and it could happen at any point. Officials and experts call it the Ark Storm, and it is the other big one fewer talking about with California's 2020 rainy season finally now underway imagine almost a month of drenching storms along the entire west coast the state would be swallowed in 10 to 20 feet of rain at up to 200 inches of rain in some places, floods would hit nearly every major population center in the state. The sheer amount of rain uh, would mean parts of the San Francisco Bay Area, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Sacramento would all be underwater. It would cause thousands of landslides, major dam failures, and it would decimate the state's entire agriculture industry. This might sound like a scene from a post-apocalyptic movie, but this type of storm is not only possible, it has happened before. California's deadliest and single most destructive natural disaster in recorded history, a so-called megastorm hit the state in the winter of 1861 and 1862. The deadly storm fundamentally changed California. Uh, it flooded a quarter of the homes that were, the few homes that were there, it destroyed one-third of the taxable land in California that year and bankrupted the state. And that's when, uh, I don't know what the population of California was in 1861. I'm, I'm guessing uh, 10,000 people. Uh, the Ark Storm, the trillion-dollar disaster no one is talking about. That's uh, what Cal. One more reason not to move to California, but uh, we're going to wind up with the entire planet from Discover Magazine. Uh, Earth is on the cusp of the sixth mass extinction. Really, here is what paleontologists want you to know. Yes. There have been five mass extinctions in our planet's history. The sixth will be more of a slow burn and unlike the ones before it. And unlike the ones before it, humanity is to blame. I guess this is for kindergartners, so we're going to look at a little Doomer 101. Rhinos, elephants, whales, and sharks. The list of endangered species is long and depressing, but it's not just these big, beautiful, familiar animals at risk. Earth is hemorrhaging species from mammals to fish and insects. The loss of biodiversity we are facing right now is staggering thanks to habitat loss, pollution, climate change, and other calamities otherwise known as humans. There have been five mass extinctions in the history of the Earth. We are on the threshold of a sixth, but extinction events don't happen overnight. They unfold over millions of years. For humans, 
that live maybe your 80 or 90 some years, that's very hard to wrap our heads around. To get an idea how to think about the sixth mass extinction, I spoke to people who have intensively studied the first five paleontologists. I asked them what they would like the rest of us to know, and I asked them what in these scary times give them hope. We are not going to insult our intelligence with the hopium at the end. Let's do the uh, do the reality. Uh, these conversations were difficult. I heard f phrases like dead species walking and slow creeping despair. And of course, the most common one of all that this dude heard was, it is worse than it looks. I mean, look, I mean, look at this picture out in front of you. You know, can you see, is that a pellated woodpecker just flying down the river? You know, it's a beautiful day on the planet. Probably looks like it did out here uh, 10,000 years ago in front of this camera. <clears throat> it's worse than it looks. One reason we don't always appreciate the gravity of the, of the problem is that we can't really see it happening. We might read alarming numbers in scientific journals, watch heartbreaking documentaries, and catch news coverage of monster hurricanes and dislodged ice sheets linked to climate change, but biodiversity loss happens quietly in the background of our lives. Precisely because extinction is long and slow, the effects of the harm we are doing now will be felt for a long time to come. Jill Leonard Pingle is a paleoecologist at Ohio State University. Uh, she describes something called extinction debt. This refers to the delay between the damage and the eventual extinction of a species. Quote, if we don't see the total extinction of a group of animals in our lifetimes, or even a couple of generations, it doesn't mean that they are not fated for extinction, she says. In other words, we have already killed some of the species that appear on t-shirts urging people to save them. Yepers. However, the damage won't always be in the background. Nizar Ibrahim is a paleontologist at the University of Detroit Mercy and a National Geographic Explorer. Quote, there will be a point in the not too distant future when we suddenly see and feel the mass extinction all around us very clearly, Ibrahim says. Ellen Curtano, a paleobotanist at the University of Wyoming, points out that this extinction is not like the one that occurred when an asteroid hit the Earth uh, 65 million years ago, releasing tremendous energy and igniting global wildfires. Quote, this one is a lot slower than that on the scale of human lifetimes. She says, Earth meaning the planet, will recover, of course. Life is tough. This is Michael Benton, a paleo at the University of Bristol. Quote, a key point of extinction crises is that life has always recovered and doubtless will recover when whatever we do to this planet. However, the recovery can take hundreds of thousands of years, and we most likely will not be here to see it. <laughs> Do you think so, Michael? Uh, we will most likely not be around to see 
the final culmination of the sixth mass extinction because we are part of the sixth mass extinction and we certainly deserve every single thing we have coming towards us. So uh, it's called karma. But of course, the sad part of this is not that humans won't be able to see the six mass extinction. Neither will all the our fellow earthlings we take down with us. But anyway, the little dog says that is enough of that. Enough of your doom and gloom, Bob. They're squirrelies. Are they squirrelies? Are they rabbits? You need to take me on a walk, and we got to do some mass extinction of some chipmunks. Get out there and enjoy your mass extinction while you still can. Bye, guys.